Yeah, so um, we're here with the amazing songwriter, uh, Angelo. Angelo. Angelo Nazoli. Nazolay. Yeah, it's a pleasure for me to sit down and talk with you about some of your songs. Um, the one in particular, which is going to be released soon, uh, Serendipity. Um, now, this song, I feel like it has one of the most immortal licks of any song, oh, especially in the local scene. And I asked you the first time I heard you play it, is that a cover? Because it's so like um, I don't know, like it's like timeless in a way. When you when you come across it and when you started uh, putting the song together, um, did you know instantly that it, that you'd you'd found something there? Yeah, a little bit to an extent. I I always find that some of your and you know this is a great songwriter yourself. You know some of your better songs that you feel of an artist usually come quite effortlessly. You know, it's usually like a quick 15 minutes, it's knocked out, it's entered your head and it's it's on the page yeah. within a short space of time. And so I remember writing the lyrics and then coming really effortlessly and it almost just sort of conjured up this whole idea in my mind. Right. And then I kind of feel like there's a bit of like, um, like a Latin element to it or so, you know, especially with the, the percussion elements that you've added into the final track. It's got this kind of like worldly vibe, you know. Is that was that a conscious effort to be like I want to write in this type of mood or this genre, or it just came out that way? Again, it just came out kind of naturally. So playing around as a songwriter, you always trying to find new chords, tones that complement or accentuate your voice. And I remember playing around with the capital this one particular night, and just literally arpeggiating an A minor chord, and this, as you say, this bossa nova kind of feel came out and then yeah it kind of transgressed then into this progression that just became this cyclical loop that allowed me to build everything else around it if that makes sense yeah yeah i mean it's like the second that you hear i remember like the first time i heard it and um, then even the lyrics as well were kind of like um, you know you know obviously it's about a, a love interest so to speak but you know, some of the lines that like um, dances through my words and stuff like that. There's something kind of like uh, mesmeric or like magical about the, you know, it's, it's almost like you're casting a spell with the song, you know what I mean? Yeah, like no, it's, some, it's, like it's, it's got this otherworldly quality. I like that. Well, I've always been into, and again, it's, it's a lot of reminiscence within the, the artwork by the party. Um, I've always found surrealism quite fascinating. Right. And so when I've always written lyrics, I've always tried to write from, and not like consciously, deliberately, but from a perspective that allows people to build an image to the soundscape, if that makes sense. So right. the, the music, the instrumentation, the lyrics being almost ambiguous or dreamy, allows the listener to build their own soundscape to go with that. Right, yeah. I think some of the best songs have that kind of um quality where they'll they'll put you in in like you'll start seeing images in your head or you'll start kind of like it will it will like remind you of something and like it will be a, a key into like a mood or a feeling um now in having listened to some of your other songs um, i can't help but feel like there's a definite influence from from some of these like um, iconic 70s artists some of the names that come to mind like Bruce Springsteen, uh, maybe like Jackson Brown, or um, there's, another, there's another one I was just thinking of, where it's like, um, it has this kind of classic um, throwback element, where like, I don't hear a lot of influence from like, current artists, it's very much that, um, and then you know, it's kind of seen like a golden era as well, do you find influence from this kind of, I wouldn't say even just like classic rock or Americana, but like this, um, you know, like this, like just like a clear, like 70s quality yeah. to the songs. Yeah, yeah you're right. actually right. You think the, the, the nail on the head there, you're on the money, absolutely. You know, Bruce Springsteen is a massive influential artist. So, you're a massive influential artist to me. People like Tom Petty. Tom Petty, Stratton. that was yeah. it. I'm yeah. glad you know that. <laughs> that was the other person who I was thinking. I was thinking, who's the other person? I was, I was trying to like tell a yeah. to Tom you. Petty. Because, like, uh, I mean, even in some of the guitar parts, like, um, 
it's at times like the way you play, where like keeping like a bass string open, it's almost like you play in the accompaniment and the bass part together. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. It sounds like there's more than one guitar player playing. When Absolutely. You play. And again, I think sometimes that's almost like a blessing in a case, to be honest, because it's almost as though when you're writing these songs, you're writing different instrumental parts, and then because you've got this. I don't want to use like wall of sound, so it's a full spectre, but you can almost hear it in your own mind. With the absence of a band, you start trying to play and pluck out other instruments within the part you're playing. Right. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, listening to you play just now, some of the songs, it's like you can hear the band there. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, Even though it's yeah. just you, it's like it's just you, I can just like wait for the snare to start coming in yeah, or something, yeah. you know what I mean? And this, do you write with a band sound in mind most of the time? I always have done. And it's only really been in the last 12 months to 18 months that I've really sort of formed as a solo artist. So right. usually in bands that have been in many, many moons ago, I was the kind of frontman songwriter, but you always had that structure of a band behind it, composite conditions, you could play, write their own parts. And then, you know, as life sort of happens, you become a dad and stuff, you end up moonlighting for the, for the little brother and being the face on a bass or... <laughs> A rhythm guitar player sort of in the background and then as I say, you know, life moves on, children grow up and you find the hobbies and the passions and the interests that really shape who you are now and you dust them off and you find the old songs that you've written and you try and then rearrange them or transcribe them in a different way to allow you to play them without losing any of the magic that the band brought to you. Yeah, I mean it's interesting you say that, talking about um Maybe you're like um, putting music on the back burner for a while when life kind of, you know, you, other things like, you know, becoming a father and um, like raising children. And then I'd spoken to you before about this idea of returning, um, returning to songs that maybe you'd written in the past and um, having this different perspective. Um, I find that really interesting. I've been, spoken, I've been speaking to a bunch of um, younger artists. Um, you know, people who are in their very early 20s and, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I was really curious with them what they thought, like, was the, the cut-off for creativity mm -hmm. because it seems like a lot of artists go through their most creative period in their 20s um, and then, you know, people will have their different perspectives on why that is, you know, whether it was like they became successful and then, you know, they just kind of, like, lost the love or the passion. Um, do you have any idea about like, well, there's a ticking clock on my kind of ability to be able to write good music or? A little bit, but then part of me feels the opposite, if that makes sense. So I do feel as though in my late teens, early twenties, I was able to channel what I call just riff rock, do you know what I mean? So one riff that leads into another and hey ho, best thing you've got a song. Yeah. But what I've found is with life experience, like a fine wine to an extent, yeah, without being cliche. You develop a maturity towards writing, if that makes sense. And so whilst the quantity might not necessarily be there, what you do find is that you can maybe hone in and write more qualitatively. Right, yeah. You can kind of pinpoint when, when you're onto something. Yeah. You can definitely know you're onto something yeah. good. And it's not just like, oh, this is just another word. You're like, oh, yeah, no, that's interesting. And I mean, and just to counter that, that question if I'm playing devil, devil's advocate book where you say um, you know a um, very accomplished songwriter from the local scene uh, Barry Jones he talks about how he wrote Hide the Sausage about 10 years ago and not to uh, you know reveal his age but you know he's um, definitely uh, like um, at a later stage wrote this really kind of like majorly successful yeah yeah just it i mean it is just such a um, an iconic song for, for the local scene and um for him to say that he sat down and wrote that you know uh, at, a, at a later stage not especially you know definitely not in his mid-20s i mean i found that inspiring absolutely and then um one artist that i've really been in oh God. <laughs> hi <laughs> no it's good that's good yeah, yeah content um, yeah, one artist that I've been really uh, inspired by uh, recently and I've been listening to a lot is uh, Leonard Cohen. And, uh, and what, one thing I've found out is that some of his most famous songs he wrote 
in his mid thirties. I think he was like thirty four or something when he wrote Hallelujah. And um, that was incredibly inspiring for me because I the reason I'm asking you as well is because you know when I turned thirty, I felt like you know I was having these doubts and questions about like is this just like am I just like um, is it fleeting and I'm chasing after something that's like escaping me and like I, I missed my chance you know what I mean but then on the other side like just from my perspective um, music isn't just about like oh I'm gonna make it and be this star it's it can be therapeutic it's self-serving it's um you know it's you know in some sense it's what you live for if you, if you love music and you love writing like the act of sitting down and writing a song it's as much for you as for anyone else do you find oh absolutely yeah i mean for me i i find that if you i remember listening to prince saying if you're not writing the music for you if you're consciously writing it for what other people are thinking the songs no longer yours you've, you've lost the soul of it yes. ultimately you've got to write what you enjoy either listening to or, or inspired by music that is derived from um but i think we all music ultimately you know, with a passion like this like you say but it's too popular but it's ultimately you, you get out what you put in and ultimately you put a kind of only you can put a limit your imagination is the limit you know only you can kind of say what is gold and what is not if that makes sense so for me I'm being able to add two kids who, you know, one's a button drummer, one's a button guitar player. Right. For me, a, a, a massive thing about releasing a song like Serendipity, um, you know, as, as, as lovely as all the things you say about the lyrics and the, the lyrics are, for me, it's more to say to them, this is how easy it can be. If, keep your mind to it, if that makes sense, I'm going to say easy, you can record your own music, you yeah. can develop your own sound, you can independently. Right. I remember you saying that to me in the past, along some of the longer lines of your motivation being it. You, you know, you want to, you want to kind of set an example and, and be a, your best foot forward in this sense. But for me, this is just a great song. You know what I mean? It, it's not like a, a with a caveat that oh, it was for this reason. It's just a great song. You know what I mean? And you should put it out like and, uh, and made up that you've got a release date for it. Um, here's one question that I thought of. Um, now, if there's a Venn diagram of musicians, successful musicians, and then people who keep themselves in good shape, right? There's not many successful musicians who are like um, visibly like in good shape. I know that this is going to sound like a weird question. Maybe like Bruce Springsteen would touched on him. He's maybe one example I could think of of someone who's like, um, you could see maybe he's, he's gone to the gym and keeps himself in good nick. Um, do you think, because this is something I consider, if I was to get myself to like, up, people would like, I wouldn't have credibility as a musician. Is there an overlap where like, I can't get too shredded or people won't like see me as this like, um, sensitive soul or something like that? And, I, I think there's a fine balance to it. I do. I think, you know, aesthetically speaking, if you look, for example, at like musicians who are coach, for example, they usually perform in genres like doom metal. Metal, metal I was going to say. And, the only, know, yeah, they only got people the tattoos on, the kind on the gear and yeah. they're like the veins <laughs> are popping up yeah. and they're just shredding on like a seven string guitar, right? But you don't see that in folk or like, you know, a no, genre that you're much. approaching, you know not what I mean? Much. And I, I, I wanted to ask you that because I thought, you know, there's something awfully interesting. There's another, there's another artist in, in the local scene who I've noticed will, be, will go to the gym and keep themselves uh, in good shape. And I'm kind of thinking, like, um, would it, would, is it, like, not palatable to, to, um, to kind of... Um, or does it not gel with, like, you know, kind of um, introspective guitar music? There's a definite observation in that, absolutely, because I think if you consider, you know, some of the greatest... Our players, for example, you know, all time, relatively you know, slender builds or you know, athletic, lean, shall we say, for want yeah. of a better word. But I do think there is a scope, and I think it's a, it's a somewhat of a niche, do you know what I mean? Those who can sort of look like that alpha male, who just got out of the factory, picks up his guitar and, you know, and his blue jeans and 
white collar or blue collar, you know, dirty hands, and you know, it depends. As, you know. Yeah, no, there's definitely, I mean, there's definitely an aesthetic for it, or I mean, you could, you could like spearhead the, the maybe, maybe. movement for it, you know, and then there's going to be people turning up at the other mic. But I mean, I just thought it was dead interesting because it's like, um, I feel like in society, we get kind of pigeonholed into mm. you're this role because this is how you look or this is yeah. how you dress. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I feel like, um, in a sense, you're kind of, you know, you're transgressing what people might expect of someone who's kind of, you know, who, who keeps uh, themselves in good shape. Um, and I just thought it'd be an interesting question. No, and it, it is. I mean? and, like, and I must admit, you, you, you experience that like stereotype from the other side you know for example if i'm in the gym and i'm having a sauna or i'm chatting to someone at the weight bench or something and you you go well i'm releasing a single next month you go play guitar yeah it's ex- you yeah, sing? No, right no that's that's dead interesting because i mean i grew up in a boxing gym and um i didn't laugh at ridicule when they like i remember i had like a, a voice memo on my phone yeah. of me like trying to sing a song and my gym mate found it, like he came around to my house and he found my phone and he's like played it and he started laughing and then he's went and told everyone in the gym and like, you know, I couldn't live it down yeah, that I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm singing to myself when I'm at home and like I think that's like a toxic element of like masculinity, I mean like oh, that's definitely is. an element to it but you'll say, you could get it from both sides where you could get, you know, if you go to like a really rooty, funky place with a bunch of like artsy hipsters they might be like, oh, this dude's just a jock. Yeah. And then you go out and you, you know, you're spending time say, in the gym or around some of these maybe toxic elements. And they're like, oh, this dude's just a pansy because he plays yeah, the guitar. Yeah, yeah. You know it's what I mean? funny though, isn't it? But you know something that's like, again, just like touching on that. Like, I've always found, in school, for example, I was the ultimate in between. So I was goody two shoes, didn't get into trouble. But I was in the football team, I was in the right. drama club. I was great at languages. I played yeah. the guitar, you know, I was in the, into athletics, so I was kind of, I had a lot of strings to my own bow, if that makes sense. Yeah. I, I, jack of all trades. Right. Of well, I mean, have you, like, consciously tried to, like, um, you know, kind of not be pigeonholed in, that, in, in your life, say, where you're like, I'm, I'm not just this guy, I have all of these interests, like, say, like, drama, music, and um, football, athletics, they're all kind of, um, Roots that people maybe get um, tunnel vision in, mm-hmm. and then they'll like, you know, not give their time to these other things. Is it something that you've always kind of. Yeah, I've always believed in, and again, it's kind of an old thing that like, goes back to me, mum, my granddad. They used to always say that I had a hand in devil's playground. So I've always had a hobby to express different things, for example. So I've always enjoyed sports and athletics to keep fit, and because it's great for camaraderie, mental health, you know, physique, all of that sort of stuff. But then. I've always enjoyed being creative and expressing myself. As as an Italian scouser who's a Leo, I wear my heart on my sleeve. Yeah. So, you know, it's nice to be able to express you know, different emotions out of through music, through various bits and bobs of drama, as I say, in the teenage years. So I think, yeah, I've always been someone who's quite well-rounded and needs multiple hobbies and interests to kind of be a funny station. You know, one question that I ask, um, I've been asking everyone, when you're writing, do the words come first or does the music come first? Depends. Depends. I think if you were to ask me and pin me down right now, I think for me, the words come easier. Uh, or first, I should say. Right. And then I try and build musically around those words. Around the mood that you've kind of... Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But then, alternatively, again, like I said, it can just depend on the moment. You know, sometimes... You can stumble across, you know, a, a lick, you know, a phrase in the guitar or some chords, and the lyrics can just easily flow over the top of it. If that makes sense, which um, was the case with Serendipity. Stumbled on the riff, words just flowed out of it. If it makes sense, just a lot easier to build up. Yeah. And then in terms of um, marketing and putting yourself out there, do you? Um, do you put much thought into how you present yourself or your music, or is it is it more so much like um, yeah. that you've like the main goal is to release them, and it's not so much like oh I'm a like social media personality. The music is the kind of end goal. Or? Yeah, I'd say it's the music is the end goal. If it makes sense for me. This is a passion I've had with for like the past part of twenty years now, and so I do it for me because I enjoy doing it. 
And so I like to just share it. For me, music is something from universal language. It's, it speaks to the soul, it doesn't matter what language you speak, you can connect with the music or something. So I don't think I overly promote or, or pay too much interest to the presentation of something. Um, but I think that kind of goes hand in hand a little bit. I'd say the rawness of my playing, my style, if that makes sense, with it being just me and a guitar. Well, I think there's an authenticity to, to what, what you're doing as well. I mean, like, as you say, like, um, there's an honesty to it as well. I mean, like, um, you know, you get you might get some uh, musicians who are, like, so conscious of how they're coming across or what have you, but that takes the fourth up. Whereas, like, as you say, when you're sitting down, um, you're just trying to write a good song, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's not like, oh, I need to wear this to do this or whatever. It's literally the music. Everything comes from the music. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a lot of the time when I play, I don't think I just come out of work or, you know, just a polo shirt and jeans. There's not a lot of thought that goes into looking a certain way, presenting it all a certain way. It's more, okay, the finger's working, is the voice ready to go? Can we combine them? Let's do it. Yes. Well, we are 10 seconds away from being out of uh, out of space, but I'm really, uh, uh, really glad to sit down and talk with you. Thank you. It was my pleasure.